drama is something that arrives before you have a chance to create it. In a way, that is exactly what happens. I think Facebook affords a certain trauma. And um, there is, in that, that's where there's a sort of a second term here. And it's one that I'm beginning to hear more of. And that is not FOMO, but JOMO. JOMO. Okay, I was just getting the first one down. So okay, well, what fo- is this? If, if FOMO is the fear of missing out, JOMO is the joy of missing out. Oh, so there is okay. A Something's been turned here. We're yeah, getting I, the, uh, I think we're now beginning to sense that there is, um, you can see often memes of folks, Netflix and chill, for instance. Yes. These are all a, a, an ode to being able to step away from the flow of social media and this interconnectedness. And, uh, and it's it's a form of recoil, I think. So that's a, that's an interesting thing that we we wanted to be connected, we wanted to be involved. Everybody wants all this information. We want to be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and those social media platforms. But now, now that we're there, wait a second. What's happened to make people kind of pull back from this? Because I find that sort of a natural reaction to it. Well, you just there's just one of my I've been listening to this guy or listening he's, he's dead. There's a uh, a philosopher and a Friedrich Hegel. You know? Yes. And um, um, he and he invented pop tarts. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, that's, didn't that's it, the, the other. Angle. Nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. I always said nothing to do with pop tarts. But he talks about how that there is um, there is a dialectic and there is a movement and there's a movement of the spirit of the age, and that each age has its own distinct spirit, and so the zeitgeist, as it were. Right. And if our current zeitgeist is sort of defined by this interconnectedness. Then, then we'll we'll see it move, and there'll be this dialectic. It'll it'll there'll be a a, a, um, um, a thesis, an antithesis, and a synthesis as there's some sort of movement of information, and that the possibility of a mind that could grow. Uh, when I think of um, there's this concept of digital natives, for instance, like my right. son is a digital native. Like I can mm-hmm. literally tell him stories that you know we played outside because we didn't have a computer. You know, right. and he's like, you know, what sort of weird place wow. did you come from? Where's the? Uh, how, how did that? Uh, wait, you played outside? So oh yeah. yeah. See, and, and the thing about you know, it wasn't the toys you get; it was the boxes. It was those big boxes that you played in back in the day. But the guy, well, that took up a lot of time, you know. Like, you know uh, but yeah, so it's re-education. Uh, it's bringing back history for. Uh, you know, it, to him, it's like. It's, but out. he is a digital native, so the mind that is required for the new age doesn't require a Gutenberg mind which is what you and I have. Okay. We grew up in a land of books. Information was shared. You shared an other mind by someone writing something down and handing it to you. Or something, uh, there was, certainly we had media, we had TV and all that sort of stuff, but still it was, it was the, uh, the zeitgeist was the Gutenberg mind. But now we live in a world of the interconnected, the digital mind. It's a different thing. Yeah, it's so fast. Everything happens so fast. So if there's a trauma somewhere, it's everywhere now. So you begin to pick up on it. it has an effect on you as an individual. On the other hand, we're it's uh, it's sort of good and bad news. We have this ability to connect with people, to build crowds, to build audience. Uh, if you've got something really positive to say, then uh, more people can hear it, and almost uh, at a moment's notice too. So. Yeah, I, f- I find that I can share uh, m- nude pictures with people far easier than I could before. I mean, it's just. Yeah. It's just not, you know, yeah, it's, if you haven't learned that lesson, we'll have that on another show it, <laughs> because yeah. uh, somebody needs to uh, control what happens to, uh, Actually, with that camera. I, whenever I, I send nudes, somebody always replies, you should see a doctor about that. That's right. really all <laughs> I <laughs> forget. It. Uh, that looks infected. That's really <laughs> that's, all, I, <laughs> that's all I ever get. Okay. <laughs> All right, but but uh, so it's having an effect on it. And no, so are you saying the JOMO the mm-hmm. is pulling back from it? So I want my personal space. Does that mean we cut off the social media? We close the phone down? We go off of uh, social media? Well, I think if 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 the battle cry of JOMO is Netflix and chill, in some way it may be simply a retreat into another form of media, or it could be a um, a momentary retreat from said thing. I will say that there are all these folks who talk about, um, you'll see this with some mental health experts, this notion of taking a, a Facebook vacation. Right. Where you literally sort of, you know, unplug. Um, I wonder though, I wonder if the folks who are doing that are those more with a Gutenberg mind. I mean, right. if they're, you know, whereas, uh, it's interesting because my, uh, my son, uh, for them, um, a big form of communication is is not books but memes. All right. So whether it what it what is to it is Twitter or Snapchat or memes, you convey 
information in these bite-sized nuggets, usually laced with irony, in his case, irony and sarcasm. Right. And there's something interesting about that. Now, what, how that connects with Jomo, I'm not sure, but uh, it could be a way to um, um, those of us who find ourselves lost to Facebook, maybe there's a natural break that comes with someone in his generation where they, they literally uh, can save themselves by being pulled into and drowned in envy by just taking nothing serious. I mean, there's a price to pay for that too, I don't right. know. Right.